The California Gold Rush by Mel Friedman People from all over the world came to California in search of gold. Find the truth. Everything you are about to read is true except for one of the sentences on this page. Which one is true? True or false? The San Francisco 49ers football team is named after the gold miners. True or false? Most American gold seekers travel to California by railroad. Find the answers in this book. A miner's pick. Contents. One, a fantastic discovery. What was found at Sutter's Sawmill? Chapter 2, Before the Gold Rush, What Did Spanish Explorers Hope to Find in California? Chapter 3, Gold Fever, Why Was Travel to California So Dangerous? Chapter 4, Life in the Land of Gold, Why Was It Hard for Miners to Make Money? The Big Truth, Panning for Gold, How Did Miners Collect Gold? A Gold Pan. California state motto, Eureka, is a Greek word meaning, I have found it. Chapter 5, The Dark Side, What Was Life Like in a Gold Mining Camp? Chapter 6, End of the Gold Rush, How Did the Gold Rush Change America? True Statistics, Resources, Important Words, Index about the author. An advertisement from the 1880s for Levi's Jeans. Patent Riveted Clothing, The Best in farmers, mechanics, and miners, the best in use for farmers, mechanics, and miners, Levi Strauss and Company, San Francisco, California. James Marshall stands in front of Sutter's Mill. Marshall bit the metal he found as a test to find out if it was gold. Chapter 1, A Fantastic Discovery. On January 24, 1848, a carpenter named James Marshall made a discovery that changed U.S. history. He was building a sawmill for his business partner, John Sutter, beside a river in Northern California's Sacramento Valley. Suddenly, something bright in the water caught his eye. Marshall bent down and picked up a piece of shiny metal. He had found gold. Some wagon trains traveled more than 2,000 miles, 3,200 kilometers, to reach California. In 1849, about 6,000 wagons traveled to California for the American Midwest. Rush for Gold Marshall and Sutter tried to keep their discovery a secret, but word got out and spread quickly. Soon the gold rush was on. Thousands of Americans and foreigners raced to California in search of gold. They came by ship and covered wagon. In the end, few of them struck it rich. The Good and the Bad Before Marshall's discovery, California was a territory of the United States. After the discovery of gold, it became the country's 31st state in 1850. As gold seekers poured into California, new towns sprang up overnight. Money earned from gold was used to build factories and railroads, but the discovery of gold wasn't good for everyone. Native Americans, African Americans, and foreign miners were not treated fairly, and mining methods polluted the land. During the gold rush, San Francisco was a busy city. Spanish explorers were among the first Europeans to visit the California coast. Early Spanish explorers mistakenly believed that California was a gigantic island. Chapter 2 Before the Gold Rush In the 1540s, the first Europeans in California were Spanish explorers. They were searching for a city of gold and for a river that was said to stretch from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. Their searches were unsuccessful because neither the city nor the river actually existed. By 1775, Spain controlled a great deal of land in North America that included Mexico and present-day Texas and California. Lands of the West By 1821, Mexico was no longer controlled by Spain, and it took over the rest of Spain's territories west of the Mississippi River. This made California part of Mexico. The United States was also growing in size during this time. It became increasingly interested in Mexico's new territories. In 1835, 
and again in 1845, the U.S. government offered to buy California, but Mexico refused to sell the land. This map of the United States in 1830 shows the territory controlled by Mexico. California Calling In the 1830s, small numbers of people began moving from other parts of the United States to California. Most were traders, fur trappers, or hunters and adventurers. By the mid-1840s, California was home to about a thousand Americans, several thousand Californios, Spanish-speaking settlers from Mexico, and more than a hundred thousand Native Americans. Before the gold rush, Californios lived on huge cattle ranches. Californios round up thousands of cattle. Trouble for Mexico. By 1845, Mexico was losing much of the land it had controlled. Thousands of Americans, known as pioneers, were traveling west by wagon in search of better lives in California and the Pacific Northwest. Many of these pioneers believed the United States had a right to expand its territories as far west as the Pacific Ocean. Over time, Americans living in Texas and California began pushing for freedom from Mexican rule. Pioneers who were traveling west loaded their wagons with supplies at towns along the Missouri River. California Victory. In 1835, Americans in Texas revolted against Mexico. Ten years later, Texas became America's 28th state. When a war broke out between the United States and Mexico in 1846, Americans in California also revolted. The war ended on February 2, 1848 with an American victory. Mexico gave the United States control of half of its territories, including California. America's victory increased the size of the United States by about 525,000 square miles, more than 1 million square kilometers. A miner uses a pan to collect gold from a stream. Gold seekers destroyed Sutter's crops, stole his cattle, and tore down his buildings. Chapter 3 Gold Fever By August 1848, some 4,000 prospectors were digging or mining for gold in the hills above Sutter's property. Every man who could afford the price of a pick and a shovel had taken off for the gold fields. In San Francisco, the streets were empty. Soldiers had left their units and sailors had abandoned their ships in port. Even San Francisco's newspapers had stopped printing. Heading south from Oregon, for six months, only people in California knew about the discovery of gold in their state. But in July 1848, the news was carried to Oregon by a ship's captain arriving there from San Francisco. Before long, Oregon newspapers were reporting that most Oregon men had gone to California to try their luck at gold mining. Oregon was suddenly faced with a shortage of lawyers, doctors, farmers, and even lawmakers. Newspapers carried word of the discovery of gold in California to readers around the world. El Dorado of the United States of America, the discovery of inexhaustible gold mines in California, tremendous excitement among the Americans, the extensive preparations migrate to the gold regions, the great discovery of gold in dust scales and lumps of quicksilver, platina, cinnabar, and sea and sea on the shores of the Pacific has thrown the American people into a state of the wildest excitement. The intelligence from California that gold can be picked up in lumps weighing six. Word travels. By August, word of the gold strike reached the east coast of the United States. A newspaper, a New York newspaper, ran the headline, GOLD! GOLD FROM THE AMERICAN RIVER! Soon, newspapers throughout the country were writing stories about the discovery of gold. In December 1848, President James K. Polk officially announced that all the news reports were true. Now it was the world's turn to catch gold fever. James K. Polk was 
president from 1845 to 1849. Routes to California. The gold seekers who headed to California in 1849 were called 49ers. About half of them took two different sea routes to San Francisco. The other half traveled to California overland on the Santa Fe, Oregon, and California trails. They made the long and difficult journey in covered wagons across the grasslands, deserts, and mountains of the American West. In 1849 alone, 90,000 49ers went to California in search of gold. Travel Dangers each of these routes was in some way dangerous. Many ships carrying 49ers sink in rough waters. Gold seekers who traveled by wagon along the trails often feared attacks from Native Americans, but Indian attacks were rare. The biggest killer on the trails was a disease called cholera. A person could die from this severe illness within 24 hours of getting it. Cholera and other diseases killed thousands of 49ers before they could ever reach California. This pile of stones marks the grave of a pioneer who died while traveling west along the Oregon Trail. The gold rush brought thousands of Americans and foreigners to mining camps. As soon as the gold was gone, many mining camps emptied out and became ghost towns. Chapter 4. Life in the Land of Gold Most 49ers were unmarried men. They lived in dirty mining camps with names like Rough and Ruddy, Hangtown, Murderer's Gulch, and You Bet. Home was usually a tent or a wooden shack. Mining work was hard. Some 49ers put in 16-hour days, six days a week. They dug dirt and moved big rocks. Throughout the long, hard days, their dreams of getting rich kept them going. Paydays. At the beginning of the gold rush, some miners found as much as $300 worth of gold a day. Back then, most Americans earned only about $30 a month. A miner might work for six months and return home with enough money and gold to live on for several years. Most prospectors found little gold. A gold rush prospector with some of his tools. The cost of living. Most 49ers made about $30 a day. However, a meal in San Francisco, Sacramento, or Stockton Three of the biggest gold rush towns could cost more than $20. Boots sold for $20 a pair. Coffee for $4 a pound. And eggs for 50 cents each. Before Miner knew it, his money was gone. Some miners also spent their money on bad habits, such as drinking and gambling. A prospector waits for a banker to weigh his gold dust. Prospectors were given money based on the gold's weight. Miners often paid for food and supplies in pinches or small amounts of gold dust. Million Dollar Ideas The people who earned the most money at this time didn't work in the mines. Sam Brannan, a store owner near Sutter's Mill, sold mining supplies to prospectors. He became the richest man in California. In 1850, Henry Wells, John Fargo, and others founded a speedy overland mail service between San Francisco and other U.S. cities. In 1852, Wells and Fargo started their own mail service. More than 2,500 communities in 24 states were connected by Wells and Fargo service. Wells Fargo stagecoaches carried gold from California to the East Coast and returned with mail and packages. Mr. Blue Jeans. In 1853, Levi Strauss, a tailor from Germany, journeyed to San Francisco and began making pants for gold miners. At first, he used canvas, a rough material. Later, he used a soft cotton cloth called denim. Miners loved his comfortable blue-colored pants, known as Levi's. 
In the 1870s, Strauss strengthened his pants by adding round copper pins that kept the pockets and seams from coming apart. Blue jeans were born. Levi Strauss, right here, was a poor tailor when he arrived in California. He became a millionaire by selling blue jeans to miners. These miners are wearing Levi's jeans.